Welcome to the meeting at the Shelter Church Live Ministries Sunday evening. We worship the Lord and seek Him and let His joy be our strength. Amen. Why don't you stand to your feet with me as we sing to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks to the Lord, our God and King.
must affect every area of my existence. And that's exactly what we're going to study tonight. That's what we're going to see in the Word. We're going to talk about the joy that is complete. In the scriptures, there are only a handful of places where the word complete is used in conjunction with joy to describe the fullness of the joy the Lord has for you. We're going to look at that and learn that some of you are going to have joy like you've never had it before. Some of you are going to have so much joy, you're going to ask God to take some of it back. Painful joy. <laughs> Because the Lord wants to set you free. He wants to set you free. It says, don't be filled with wine where it is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why would it compare it to wine? Because the Lord knew that His mighty presence was intoxicating. He knew that. It was proven in the second chapter of Acts when they mistook them as being drunkards because of the way the presence of the Lord affected them. Oh, just take a drink, take a drink. Taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the new wine that's spoken of by the prophet Joel that in the last days I will pour my spirit out on all flesh, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. It's his desire to make you complete with his joy. So let's just prepare our hearts to receive his word tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Our prayers go out to everyone who is wrestling with Whatever ailments, we pray for healing. Healing in Jesus' name. As I said, I appreciate your prayers for us tomorrow as I'm going through the week. Heading that way. Complete joy. I want us to look at a couple of scriptures in foundation. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, very popular verse. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And this is true. God gives a strength that comes from joy. I have never seen anything bring strength to someone like joy does. That when joy rises up from within you, it, it, it renews your strength. It restores you. It, it's the refreshing. The times of refreshing that come from the presence of the Lord. To me, it's one thing to weep feel sorrow for sin, and, and feel the lovey-dovey feelings, but really my strength does not come from those moments. My strength comes from when I'm rolling around the ground laughing. It comes from the joy. When I feel that joy, it builds me up, and, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. First Peter 1.8, Whom having not seen, ye love, and whom, though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice, with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I, I purposely quoted it from the King James because I like where it says, with joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's different in different translations, but that's my favorite. Joy unspeakable because joy cannot really be put into words and we cannot really describe joy adequately. And, and so it, it's easier for us to, to just... I just accept the joy of the Lord as our strength. And, and when joy is on you, when the joy is flowing through you, of course you can't really speak uh, coherently. I mean, it, you, it's not always understood. You'll see people experiencing that joy. But I want us to go to the Scriptures. The next uh, slide, it says here, joy is not an earthly concept. And I know that we, we see it a lot, but if you look back, everywhere the word joy is used, it's usually connected to a scripture. And a lot of people know joy from Christmas carols, this time of your joy to the world. Your joy to the world. Do, do, do. Well, that's it's connected to scripture. It's connected to the fact that joy came because Jesus came to earth. He brought joy to us. We see joy in the Bible listed amongst the fruit of the Spirit. With faith. 
Faith also is, is something like joy that is not terrestrial. It's not of, of this world. Joy is connected to eternity. True joy can only be experienced by those benefited by the covenant of salvation. Now, happiness is earthly. Happiness is, is a state of contentment brought about by things being as you like them. And we've talked about this a lot here, but it means everything in order. It's when all your bills are paid and your dog's tail is wagging and your goldfish is fat and your favorite television shows are coming on tonight and you have, your wife and, or your mother has fixed your favorite food or your favorite uncle's coming to town, the one that always gives you money. And, you know, these are things that cause happiness. Happiness is that new car. Uh, I rode in a new car a little while ago, and it had that new car smell. You know that smell? That's happy. That's a happy smell. The happy smell. It's so happy that car dealers found a way of packaging that smell and putting it into an aerosol can, so used car dealers will spray that. I have a friend of mine who's a used car dealer. He will spray that spray in there right before he shows the car. It doesn't last long. Before long, the car goes back to smelling like feet. But before that, they spray that spray in there to make it smell like a new car. Well, see, that's happy. There's a lot of happy things. We wish people a happy birthday. But those things are because we're wishing for earthly benefits, things that are prospered. Luck is connected to happiness. And people say, well, I don't believe in luck. Well, luck really in the happy realm, yeah. If you're lucky, things will work out a certain way that will make you happy. But the fact is in life that you know happiness is temporal. There's nothing eternal about happiness. How many of you have been happy and have never grown unhappy? It's just not possible. But joy, joy is something eternal. Joy is a concept that did not really exist even in the language of the Bible until God's people came along because it is a gift that comes directly from above. It comes from eternity. It comes from heaven. That's why it's a fruit of the Spirit. Jesus, in fact, the word joy and all the words connecting to it like rejoice, uh, Jesus experienced all the emotions of joy, and Jesus had joy. A prevalent thing about Jesus in his ministry, in his life, was joy. And, and it's sad that artists during the Renaissance and, and before even in other times always painted Jesus to look so mournful and so somber. And there were moments that, yeah, you know, he was not smiling big on the cross when he was being crucified. But all other times, he was joyful. The Bible speaks about, it uses extreme forms of verbs connected to this word joy. Joy as, as the charis, the, the, it is the reflection of grace. Technically, I could get into a lot of deep, deep word study about this particular charon, charus, charis, these words that are connected to grace. Grace is given to you, which means you don't need to do anything. God sets you free and loves you just as you are. All you need to do is believe, and it's counted unto you as righteousness. That's God's unmerited favor. That's grace. The experience or the reflection of grace is joy. So therefore, joy doesn't even start for someone's life until they meet Jesus as Savior. And if you remember right, you did not experience joy before you met Jesus. You experienced happiness. There were happy moments where Harlequin cards were written and, and you know, nice, pretty things and flowers and, and good food and those happy things. But joy happened when you got saved. I remember the first time I felt joy. I was 17 years old. I had no joy growing up. I had a lot of happiness. We had many happy moments uh, with my family. And, and of course, my, my nucleus, my family, my father, mother, uh, my father was cheating on my mother and, and he went out with other women from the beginning of their marriage and she always felt betrayed. And I'm sure nobody has broken families like that in here. But my family had a lot of problems. And as a result, my mother was always in pain. 
mentally, emotionally. I grew up watching her. She'd put these big headphones on and turn the stereo up loud and drink wine to, to the point where she could just leave life and forget. And I would go to her and I would ask her, tell me, Mom, don't drink so much. Don't, where are you going? But you understand, it was a, an environment where she knew that my father, who was supposed to be out doing something on business, she knew for a fact that she, he was out cheating on her. So that's an environment a little child is growing up in. I knew what was going on from the time I was a little child. So I didn't have joy. Just fleeting moments of happiness, and most of that outside of my home. So when I finally got to the point of going outside and asking if God was real, you've heard my testimony, if you're real, prove it to me, supernaturally he began to manifest things to me that led me to that point of receiving him. And even up to that point of me actually praying for Jesus to be my Savior, I, I had not experienced joy at all. There was no joy. But as I lay in that bed at the age of 17 and turned the TV on and heard that man on the television, as soon as I changed the channel, say, do you want to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? And I answered the television as if it were a person talking to me. I said, yes, because I had been seeking the Lord for quite a while. It's a long story. I'm cutting short. But I said a prayer with the man on the black and white television, and, and I received Jesus, and I met joy. I met him. Because Jesus, you know, the fruit of the Spirit is the personality of Jesus Christ. You want to know who Jesus is? Read the fruit of the Spirit. That's Jesus. Love, peace, and joy. When you meet Jesus, you meet joy. When you meet Jesus, you meet peace. When you meet Jesus, you meet love. Jesus is those things. And he is joy. So when I received Jesus as my Savior, that warm feeling came over me right as I prayed for my sins to be washed. I felt that go. And, and I was lying in the bed. And I was on my side praying the prayer, looking at the TV. But when I did, that feeling that came over me, a smile came on my face and I passed out. I passed out. And the next thing I remember was waking up the next morning. I was rendered unconscious by joy. The joy of the grace that I received, the unmerited favor of God, knocked me out. <laughs> and I still feel it today. It has never left. And I woke up that next morning and I remember thinking, ow! And my face hurt. My cheeks were sore. And I didn't know why, but I felt that there's these strange protrusions <laughs> on my face. They were sticking out, and, I, and it's, it hurt. What happened was all night I smiled. For the first time in 17 years of life, I had a reason to really smile. Not a fleeting moment of happiness, but real joy. And my face hurt. It was not used to joy. And I woke up so joyous. I rejoiced and I went with joy to tell my friends and they could see. You know what you see on a new believer's face? Joy. It's unmistakable. I can tell. That's why when I do crusades or meetings where many people get saved, I, there's a night and day difference between the people. I often start weeping after they receive Jesus and that prayer is finished when I look at them because I can see Jesus on their face. I see joy. They come up there like this, <laughs> dying, scared, smiling a little. <laughs> but you can see the pain. And then they pray a prayer. They receive Jesus, and they leave with light in their faces. Their eyes are smiling. Their nose is smiling. Their ears are smiling. Joy. Real joy. And it's so exciting. Happiness is earthly, but what we want is joy. Go to the next slide. It says, I want us to look at the seven times in the Bible where the term complete joy appears. And we can see where this full expression of joy can be attained. So from the following, we receive and live in the fullness of God's joy for our lives. And before we go on, I'll let you know that, that there are only seven times in the passages of the Bible where the two words are used together. And that's the thing I love it when the Lord gives me messages like this because he'll tell me, go look up these two words. And sure enough, there's always seven. Seven or three or twelve. 
Sometimes there's 94, but how many of you glad I didn't prepare those messages? <laughs> Today we're going to see the 94 steps to joy. No. That, now, the word joy appears many times, but in conjunction with complete fullness of joy, I, I isolated those scriptures so that we can see something, and from these we can see, from these following things, how to receive and live in the fullness of God's joy for our lives, because you know you can step away from the joy if you're not careful. You can walk away from joy. And, and because it's a reflection of grace, I just said how you do it. You walk away from the grace. You, you go back to works. You go back to a works mentality. And we're going to see there's one thing about natural work. And actually joy can come from work, which we'll see in a moment. But it, it's not you earning something religiously. It's work in service. So these seven things we see. Number one, joy can come from work. From work comes joy. Let's look at this scripture. This is in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 13 to 15. Celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days after you have gathered the produce of your threshing floor and your wine press. This is basically your paycheck. After you get the money that you work for with your hands, be joyful at your feast your sons and daughters, your men servants and maid servants, and the Levites, the aliens, the fatherless, that's not aliens coming in spaceships, but farms. The aliens would be great dudes with big eyes. No, these are farmers. The fatherless and the widows who live in your towns. For seven days celebrate the feast to the Lord your God at the place the Lord will choose. For the Lord your God will bless you in all your harvest and in all the work of your hands and your joy will be complete. Interesting. From what? From the work of your hands. And this caught my eye when I was thinking it's true. When you work with your hands, when you make something and do something that is of a benefit to you and to your family, perhaps your job, you can experience the joy of the Lord in your job, in your work. Maybe your work is academic. Maybe you're in school. You can experience joy from fulfilling your obligations in your academic career. By studying and getting a good test score, you can feel joy very often from getting good grades and from doing the right thing or working with your hands and doing the right thing. You will experience joy and weep even in the presence of the Lord because the Lord gave you power to make wealth. It says in Deuteronomy, the Lord blessed you with the ability to work with your hands and do things. And you know that word work sometimes is a four-letter word to people. Some people see that as a dirty word. I like work. I like physical work. I like sweat. I like working hard. I like to, I, I, before I become a minister of the gospel, I did construction. Also, I did demolition. I did all the areas. Anything that, that you need to do to build a house in the United States of America, I've done it. But we build houses differently there. But I have all the skills needed to do the plumbing and the foundation and the framing up, which is the wooden, uh, the way we build the structure of our houses. We build the framework. We frame them up out of wood. And then on the outside, we put uh, some type of insulation or siding. And we put insulation on the inside. And we use sheetrock on the inside. I've done all of that. I know how to do it and install the electrical. My father was a master electrician. I learned from him. Uh, my other family members were painters. I can do the painting. I can do the texturing of the ceiling. I can do everything. I thank God for that ability. And as an early Christian, when I first got saved, the first thing, and you know, the first thing I ever prayed for, for the Lord, when I just got saved, that next day I went for a walk and I prayed. And the first thing I prayed for was a job. I prayed for a job. And you know what? The Lord gave me a job that same day. As soon as I got, actually, I prayed for a job. I prayed for a church and I prayed for a Bible. But interestingly, I prayed, I needed work and I was willing to work. And I knew I could no longer do my former line of work. So I knew I wasn't going to earn money anymore from that. So now I can't do that. I'm born again. That's gone. And I knew that. And it was no problem. I was happy to leave it behind. But I needed legitimate work. And that's how the Lord answered. He gave me a construction job working and building roofs and doing those things. And I would, I would smile and be happy. I'd be on the roof smiling and happy because I was working and earning money and being able to, to be a blessing. I couldn't wait to tithe the first time. 
I was so excited. I was shaking. I was so excited to put that money into the offering that this is the portion I want to give to the Lord. I was excited to give money to visiting missionaries and ministers that were coming through. And, and, and all of this was part of the joy of working. Let's go to the next one. From humility comes joy. Joy comes from humility. And let me do the opposite. Joy is repelled by pride. There's no joy with pride. Pride can cause you happiness for a moment, but it is not going to produce joy. In fact, nothing sinful will ever produce real joy. John chapter 3, verse 26, they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one who test you testified about, well, he's baptizing and everyone's going to him. To this John replied, a man can receive only what is given him from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I'm not the Christ, but am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and it is now complete. He must become greater. I must become less. And it's interesting, in this context of humility, that he was happy to be less. He said that his joy was complete because he was cheated out of his ministry. <laughs> Jesus stole his ministry and this caused his joy to be complete. It doesn't really calculate, but I know this feeling. When you see someone else and you know that God is reducing, everybody wants to grow, everybody wants to be more, sometimes God makes you less. And when he does it, it's joyous. He must increase and I must decrease. I'm a missionary, I've planned churches, I've been working my way out of jobs for 30 years. And as the people grow in the churches that I've planted, they begin to do more and more and more, and I do less and less and less, and my joy becomes greater and greater and greater. The greatest joy I ever experienced in my ministry in Mexico was that last service when I didn't preach, I didn't teach, I didn't do the worship, I didn't do anything. I just snuck in the back and watched. And I had so much joy, and the Lord blessed me and filled me. I had become nothing to that church. Right before I left for India, I'd become nothing. I, it was a hard job to get there. But once I got there, it was such a wonderful feeling to know that my joy could be complete because I become less so that Pedro Vargas could become more and that the leaders of the church could rise and do what they did. And it was wonderful. The church had grown so quickly. Within two weeks, the church had like 20 people in it that never saw me before. That's when it was really, as soon as it got into the hands of Pedro, it started multiplying. Why? Because that was God's plan. It takes humility, though. But from humility will come God's joy to us. Amen? The next one. From obedience comes joy. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now, remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. That's pretty clear, isn't it? From obeying. Obeying what? His commands. Jesus, the firstborn among many brothers, came and showed us as our elder brother, let me show you how it's done. Whatever the Father tells me, I'm going to obey. Even to the point of death and suffering. Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass. But if it's not possible, let your will be done. To the point of death, he was willing to endure whatever he had to. And he said, this is what you need to do. So also, he, when we obey the commands that Jesus gives to us, he puts his joy inside of us. The greatest waves of joy I've ever experienced are when I had difficulty in obeying, but finally did. Something the Lord called me to do. Some place he called me to go. 
You know, you hear me talk a lot about when I went to India and, and the difficulties of that, but, but there was a lot of joy. There was so much joy. I think on a regular sustained manifestation of Holy Spirit joy, Myra and I had a greater manifestation of that joy together in the times that we were going to the most remote villages where they had not even heard the name of Jesus before. That was, those were the most joyous moments of my life. Why? Because he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. When we were just simply obeying the scriptures, we laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. There was times that I literally, as I said earlier jokingly, but I, did, I asked the Lord to please pull back on the joy. Please, this is too much. This joy is hurting me. Just, I want to stop laughing for a little while. We would laugh and laugh. We had to pull over on the side of the road because of fits of laughter several times. We'd be driving and just start laughing and laughing and couldn't stop. And I, I would hide. I wouldn't even want to look at Myra because every time I'd look over at her, she'd look at me and go, and I would start laughing. We'd start laughing all over again. I had to like put my hand up and not, I'd look out the side and look at the front of, you know, I, there was so much joy from obeying what he told us to do. But honestly, when he first told me to go to India, I said, no way. He said, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> but I finally obeyed, and I went. And my joy was complete. And it still is, as we obey the Lord. Obey Him. Just obey Him. Remain in Him. His words will remain in you, and He's going to give you some commands. Obey those things and remain in His love. If you don't obey Him, you're not remaining in His love. But if you want to live in the love of God, you obey Him. And as a result, your joy will be complete. Amen. Listen to the next one. From prayer comes joy. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask Him about this. So He said to them, Are you asking one another what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice. And no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. And this comes from your prayer of petition. Just today, I was teaching that message that I taught here in the past about crying out to the Lord. And how Hannah cried out to the Lord because she was barren. She didn't have a child. We cry out to the Lord. And when the Lord does, we ask in His name. We receive it. And it makes your joy complete. Your prayer life of petitioning the Lord and involving Him in on every circumstance of your life when you have need will cause, it will be a fountain of joy when He provides for you. When He gives to you. It's amazing. When, when, and you can ask Him. The more specifically you ask Him, the more specifically He will give to you. Most of my needs surround ministry. And I know when I need to raise certain money to pay for certain projects. And we were doing a project once uh, when I was 39 years old. I went to the United States and I was coming up on my 40th birthday. And we needed money to be able to fund projects we were doing in Indonesia and in India simultaneously and here in Singapore and the Bible school students that were coming. We had students coming that didn't have a lot of money and I just I just threw a number out there to the Lord in petition and I said, Lord, I need $40,000. I said, I need $40,000 by my 40th birthday. And uh, most of you know the story. I went to the States. I was there for three weeks itinerating, preaching from church to church. I did a lot of meetings. I did meetings in the day, meetings in the morning. I did men's meetings, women's meetings, children's meetings, animal meetings, you name it. I did it, whatever, because when I'm doing that, you, you, if it's a meeting, I'm going. Oh, we don't know if you would want to come to this meeting. Yes, I will come to that meeting. Whatever it can be, the 
toilet brush makers association meeting. I'm going to it because I just want to be where people are so I can share the good news of what the Lord has done for me. And so I did that. But in all that fundraising that I did toward the ministry, uh, we had only raised uh, $4,000. And it was the last day. That was it. It was finished and I didn't have enough money. I asked the Lord for $40,000, but that last day my flight was leaving the following day, which was a Monday, and this was a Sunday. And, and I, just, I just told the Lord that, well, maybe he thought I meant $4,000. Cause you know, maybe the zeros got mixed up. So I had 4,000, exactly $4,000 in cash from offerings people had given me and a couple of checks that I had cashed. They tallied up to exactly $4,000. I remember scratching my head. Okay, that's not 40, but God will provide in the way and event it'll all come and always does. And so I, I didn't worry about it. And that night I preached in my own church at Pastor Butch who was just here in his church. And all of a sudden, at the end of my preaching, the power of God came very strong, and I began to shake uncontrollably. I remember I was shaking so much, I was even shocked. And I go through these things, I feel the power of God, but finally my legs began to shake, and I grew weak, and I fell on the ground. I just finished my message, I fell on the ground, my face to the ground, and Pastor Butch jumped up and said, I feel the power of God. God says we need to bless his ministry with money. Hurry, right now, don't wait, don't wait, just come and give. And there, were, there was a small amount of people in the church. We only had about 35 or, or 40 people in the church that night. Small group, but, but before long, I felt things landing on me. Like I, as I was there, I felt things like that. <laughs> and papers were falling on me and I was shaking and I couldn't, but I felt another one, another one, another one. It's like it was snowing paper on me. And, and what I did not know is they were throwing money on me. Money and checks. And all of a sudden, a man jumped up and said, everything on the floor, I'll double it in Jesus' name. That he made a vow right there that every money that was falling on me, he was going to write a check for two times the amount of what came there on the floor. Whereby his brother jumped up and says, I'm holding you to it. You better do what you promised. <laughs> and they took all that money together. They had to carry me out of the building. And, and this is late night because the services lingered now, all these shenanigans with this crazy offering that took place. They carried me out. It's like past 11 o'clock. They brought me to the back room where there was a meal prepared for me, and as they do with guest speakers. And so they brought all the money together, and they brought it to the office and counted it up, and they made the man who promised write the check for double the amount, everything, so all that finished, they got the tally done, and I'm sitting in the back, and it's just like, it's just like a half hour to midnight, it's 11.30, coming up on midnight, and they came in and reported to Miss Susan, who was the treasurer, it reported to Miss Susan the amount, and she looked shocked, she looked, she showed, push, push, look at this. And what she don't know is also in that service, Butch said to his wife, take everything we have in the church accounts and empty it out. And at that time, he didn't know that she had just made a fresh deposit of a lot of, like, the monthly money. She made it early. Hallelujah. <laughs> but they made a promise. They did it. And then she came with the tally. You know how much the tally was complete? They gathered $36,000. And in just 15 minutes before my 40th birthday, with the $4,000 in my pocket and the $36,000 check written from the church, I had exactly $40,000. How many of you know I experienced joy? <laughs> joy unspeakable. Full of glory. Why? Because I made a petition to the Lord, and when He answered it, I felt so vindicated. I felt so, so, so imbibed by the fact that God is real and He listens. We know He listens, but when He does something like that, all doubts are removed. You know that he sits in the heavens and he laughs. That's what the Bible says. He sits in the heavens and he laughs. He laughs. He just has a great time blessing you. He wants you. But you need to ask. You need to put things down. You have not because you ask them. Let's go to the next one. From selflessness comes joy. This is an absolute fact. I like this one and I live it all the time. Philippians 2, 1 through 4. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition 
or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. There's that powerful word, others. Now this is Paul experiencing joy from the atmosphere of selflessness, but it is also ours. That when you do a selfless act and you bless someone and, and you don't care for your own well-being, you just, you, just, you just don't really care whether you have anything or not, you just give to someone else. It's so much joy. I love, I love feeding people in my home. I love when they come and, and I rarely, sometimes I don't get to eat, but I lie and say, no, I have plenty of full, thank you. But I get so much joy out of giving the food to other people that I don't need to eat. I'm not even hungry. The joy has filled me. And it's the same when I, when I give offerings, when I give money, when I bless ministries. I love to do that. All these things, anything you do that is not based in selfishness will bring joy. God loves a cheerful giver. And he will bless you for it. Let's go to the next one. From fellowship comes joy. 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. You see the concept here is this unity together, this fellowship that we have. The Bible says, Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. God's joy pours out in a corporate setting when we are together in the presence of the Lord. His joy manifests because he loves to see his children together. He says, he thinks it's lovely. Look how wonderful it is when brothers dwell together in unity, he said. It's like the anointing. He compares it to the anointing that runs over Aaron's head and drips down his beard. It's precious to him, precious in his sight. And as a result, you feel his favor manifest in joy when you are fellowshipping together. I love the services. I love preaching. I love leading the worship. But sometimes my most joyous moments of the service is after when we're eating all the food and I'm just kind of standing there watching everybody eat. I just feel so good. That feeling of community, that koinonia, that fellowship that's there. Such a warm feeling. It's so exciting to see that joy comes from that. Now we come to the last one. Prayer for one another comes to joy. From, it should say. From prayer for one another comes joy. Let's look at the scripture. 2 John 1, 12. I have much to write to you, but I do not want to use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to visit you and talk with you face to face. Why would he want to see him face to face? So that our joy may be complete. So that our mutual joy. Remember he said this to the Romans as well. I long that I, to see you that I might impart a spiritual gift. In other words, he could not impart that gift by the letter. He had to see them face to face. There is just something that releases joy is released when we face to face come and I hope to visit you and talk with you face to face so that our joy, I receive as much joy as the people who are receiving joy. Those who receive joy from the presence of the Lord, from the anointing of the Holy Spirit, when I pray for them, see when we pray for someone else to receive that joy, you experience it. And the more the joy manifests in people's lives and they're set free by joy, the happier I am. Very often while I'm praying, I have to bend over and laugh for a while and get up and keep going because I feel so much happiness. And joy, you know, joy will not always manifest only in laughter. Joy sometimes just is brooding. It hovers over you. It just sits on you. You know that feeling like you just, you just feel good. 
you feel joy. And then it just doesn't take much to, to stir that up. It just takes one funny little thing, and that's it. And once you start laughing, then, then you can't stop laughing. But the joy, though, it can be like a calm water flow, but just any little thing can stir it up. And I want your joy to be complete. I want my joy to be complete. And when we face to face come, that's why we have, that's why the internet is not good enough for you to go to internet church. There's people who do that. Oh, I go to church online. Hallelujah. I have this church and I look at the services online. That's not face to face. You're not going to have the same dynamic. You may be blessed. I'm not saying you can't be blessed by that. Obviously, I just shared my testimony. I got saved with a man on my TV. So you can experience that. I put Butch, Susan, and Rachel in my office and put a Rodney High Brown tape on in my room and played it for them, and they got stuck in there for three hours. <laughs> I played, they were just laughing. They, and Miss Susan said, don't you feel that? Don't you feel that? I said, I do feel it. She knows, that, of course, that ministry, but she hadn't seen it in a while, so I just freshened them up a little bit with the joy of the Lord. And that's what it was, just that immense joy, God's joy. And it's His desire that you have that joy. It's His desire that you live in that joy. And He wants to fill you with His joy. And that's my prayer for you tonight. I pray that you would be filled with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Why don't we stand to our feet? How many of you smell that and feel joy? Yeah. <laughs> Michael is our chef tonight. I believe he's making grilled cheese sandwiches. Grilled cheese sandwiches are like sandwiches filled with joy. Yeah. Cheese is like joy to me. I like cheese. It's a happy thing. And it's yellow too. Not somehow joy, when you think joy, you think yellow. I do. The color yellow comes in all. But my light sunshine. Like sunshine. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Just raise your hands up to the Lord. Let this joy come.
Oh God, to bring a refreshment, a revival to many of these missionaries who are serving you out there. Yes. So Lord, Lord, we, we, we pray for supernatural yes. divine appointments. We pray for supernatural um, events, yes. happenings, leading. Dreams in the night, vision in the day. Lord, words that have just come to his ears. Lord, we just pray. Oh God, that he'll come back and he can share a great testimony of how you use him and how you um, reveal yourself to your missionaries. So bless him, oh God. In Jesus.